So picture this story. As a physiotherapist, you give your patient an exercise to do and say, choose whatever weight you like. They choose a weight which is 53% of their one rep max. Is that enough? Does it actually matter? Let's find out. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So really interestingly, we have a great paper from Steele et al released in early 2022. They did an exploratory meta-analysis involving 18 different studies and 359 different participants. And they identified that when an individual is asked to self-select the weight that they use for their resistance training, on average, they select a weight which is 53% of their one rep max. So why does this matter? Well, commonly you'll hear in physiotherapy departments that instead of a physiotherapist saying, I'd like you to do three sets of 12 reps at 67% of your one rep max, they're more likely to say, I'd like you to do three sets of 12. And then it's up to the patient to choose the weight. Well, seemingly from that of Steele et al, they are likely to select a weight on average 53% of their one rep max. Now, is that actually enough to help your patient make the strength gains that you and they are looking to achieve? But then again, does it actually matter? Stick around. So what do we know from the past? Well, according to Steele et al, and I will read for you here, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends that novice to intermediate trainees use 60 to 70% of one rep max in their resistance training sessions for strength improvements. Now, of course, we need to factor into it more than that. How many sessions a week are they doing? How many sets are they doing? How much recovery are they getting? And of course, what is their overall aim? Are they looking to make pure strength gains or are they aiming more for endurance? This might factor based on their hobbies, their sport, or even their occupational lifestyle. For example, a builder who needs to carry 20 kilos all day every day around a building site may need to think about strength, but they also need to think about endurance as well. So to put this in perspective, if you look at a standard rep max calculator, if 65% of the one rep max is what we should be using when doing 15 repetitions in a set, I would estimate that 53% of the one rep max is what you would be looking for if you were doing something in the region of 25 to 30 repetitions, a lot lower. Now, naturally, there are going to be some times when patients are going to want to do 30 reps, but the majority of the time, I imagine it's going to be far less than that. There's also the consideration of the rep max continuum. This is from Bakel and Earl in 2008 in their book, The Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning. Now, the idea here is that we may adjust our rep max use based on what kind of gains we're looking to make. Is it strength? Is it power? Is it endurance? Or is it hypertrophy? The assumption would be that if you're trying to make strength gains, you may look for higher weight and lower reps. And if you're looking to make endurance gains, you're looking for lower weights, but higher reps. I suppose it makes sense that if you want to gain endurance, four reps isn't going to gain you much. However, we have the recent counter argument to this from Schoenfeld et al. 2021 with their study, and I'll read it to you, loading recommendations for muscle strength, hypertrophy and local endurance, a re-examination of the repetition continuum. To summarise, this research group highlight that some of the original theories in the RepMax continuum may not totally stand up, and they summarise, and I'll read it to you, we propose a new paradigm whereby muscular adaptations can be obtained and in some cases optimised across a wide spectrum of loading zones, i.e. doing training across a variety of rep max calculations and number of repetitions could still gain you improvements in strength, endurance or hypertrophy. So perhaps a specific number of repetitions relative to our rep max calculation isn't necessary after all. But then, as a physiotherapist, remember we have to make lots of really important considerations for our patients. They might be very low in confidence. They might be in a lot of pain. They might never have done resistance training before. So if we walk in like Jerry the gym guy and say, I want you to do 75% of your one rep max with a rep range of 10 and two to three sets to optimize your strength and hypertrophy changes, what on earth are they going to be thinking? Now, picture this story instead. 
Your really nervous and anxious patient comes to see you two weeks after your first session and despite having pain for the last two years, they actually went to the gym and they come back to you and they say, I can't believe it, I actually went to the gym and that exercise we practiced, I was able to do it and I did three sets of 10. I'm really proud of myself. I had no idea I could actually do this. And you say, that's amazing, well done, I'm super proud of you. How much weight did you use? And they say, oh, I, I don't know, maybe it was, I just started with something like five kilos. Now, are you going to option one, calculate this relative to their one rep max and tell them that they only did 33% of their one rep max? Or are you going to option two, ignore the one rep max and instead congratulate them on the trust and confidence that they built in themselves and how they independently went to the gym to do this that could set them on the pathway to change their pain forever. I'd go for option two. So in summary, is 53% of your one rep max enough? Ultimately, work with the patient that's in front of you. Sure, if you've got a, someone who knows what they're doing in the gym, but just needs a couple of pointers, you might highlight them that they do need to use a higher one rep max in order to make the strength gains they're looking for. But on the other hand, if you're working with that patient who's nervous, anxious, doesn't know what they're doing, and just wants to go from step zero to step one, give them some small guidelines, but give them lots of freedom. Give them the opportunity to explore what works to them. Remember that they could start here in order to get to here. Ultimately, it's individualized patient care. Let's keep it that way. So guys, we'd really appreciate your support in smashing that like button and subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Clinical Physio and check out our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.